Okay, what I wanted to do was go over the difference between these two gauge clusters. These are both out of uh, a third generation Honda Accord, um, but the the both have uh, two different uh, voltages. So the fuel gauge and temperature gauge will are not cross compatible. So I wanted to go over the differences between these two and why they are not compatible, what to look out for so that um, when you're looking for replacement parts, you know what um, to be looking for. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this uh, plastic shielding off of both of these. And um, you do that by there's these little tabs on the bottom uh, and also on the top right here. So, uh, but before we do that, there's this wire that is attached to a light bulb back here. So we're gonna first unscrew that so it comes out. And let me do the same thing on this one so that uh, we can take these off. I'm trying, now mind you, I'm trying to do this while holding uh, the camera here. So I'm trying to do this one handed. So we're gonna first, maybe I'll do it with the top one. So I'm just pinching these little clips, pushing it down my thumb. Okay, so that part's popped loose. So let's see if I can get the bottom one as well. I can, okay. Okay, so I think, I'll put these back in this. Okay, so I think I got this one all taken care of. I apologize, this is moving all around. I do not have, there we go. Okay, so we got that off of this one. We'll just set that back in place. Let me just do the same thing with this one. So if you don't know how to do any of this stuff, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to wait is because it's really not that hard to do. These gauge clusters are pretty, fairly simple. So this one, pretty much got it as well. There we go. Okay. So the difference between these two is this right here. This light, the seatbelt light, does not, it is only on uh, specific uh, Accord bottles that are sold in the United States. All other gauge clusters look like this and do not have that seatbelt light on here. This is uh, similar to, this is what you would see on the gauge cluster in all sedans from 1986 to 1989 in America, and I believe it's 1985 to 1988 everywhere else in the world. Um, so all the sedans had this and uh, two door coupes and hatchbacks in America that had this, the front seat belts attached to the B pillar are like this. The only ones that have this uh, have the seat belts, the front seat belts attached to the front doors, which has a special uh, electronic uh, seat belt system that Honda called an automatic, uh, automatic seat belts um, because of the regulations that were going on in the United States at the time. It didn't, it was uh, not, didn't appear on all the cars, but it did appear on some of them. And if your gauge cluster has a seatbelt icon on it, you can only use um, the uh, fuel gauge and temperature gauges uh, uh, with other uh, gauge clusters that have this seatbelt icon here. Um, because this one works on a, is it has a different voltage and so does this one. So they're not cross compatible at all. So if you have um, either a sedan or a hatchback or coupe in America that, does, that doesn't have the um, seatbelt light here and has the seatbelt mounted to the uh, B pillar, you need to stay with this gauge cluster. If you have um, Accords and everywhere else in the world, also, um, any Honda Vigors from this time period, you need to stay with this, with, um, this kind of gauge cluster. 
Um, and the reason is, is the automatic seat belts that were in um, the American uh, ones, what they did is they mounted the seat belts to the doors and uh, they actually had an electronic uh, solenoid attached to the, I'm sorry, all solenoids are electronic. <laughs> they, instead of using the mechanical lock feature, it had electronic lock feature. So when you uh, turn the key to the on position, had the seat belt buckled and the door closed, the solenoid would lock the seat belt into place. And the moment you either open the door, unbuckle the seat belt, or turn the key off, it would uh, disengage the solenoid. So you can move the seat belt freely. The whole concept is on these seat belts, you could leave them buckled, open the door and get out and still leave the seat, have the seat belt buckled. You could enter and exit and leave the seat belt buckled. That's a pain in the neck. And there's actually a Motor Week, um, a retro Motor Week episode of I think the 1988 uh, Honda Accord Coupe where the woman is actually climbing in and out with the seatbelt still buckled. Um, so those are the two differences. It is not related to the uh, trim line. It's only related to this. If the car has this uh, seatbelt feature it, but uh, it doesn't matter if it's a DX, LX, LXI, SEI, EX, or um, whatever other names that they had out there. Um, shoot, I forgot to grab a Phillips screwdriver because what I want to do is go through how to remove this because um, these two are pretty self-exclamatory. Um, let me just pull this off. This, uh, the outside of this gauge cluster is from a DX. I have a 89 LXI and um, let me just slide this back on for a minute. And I wanna share with you my story about the, how I found out about this issue. So I, I uh, my 1989 Accord hatchback LXI was delivered uh, last, May, so that'd be May 2022. And I knew the fuel gauge didn't work. So uh, the first thing I did was unplug the sending unit in the tank and did some testing and it tested fine. So my next thing was to replace the uh, fuel gauge and temperature gauge. So I bought this gauge cluster on eBay. And if you notice, it has program FI and a circuit uh, uh, what looks like a microchip on here. So this is from an 8687 LXI. And the fuel gauge and temperature gauge did not work correctly. What happened in my car was uh, the fuel gauge worked once and then stayed full um, and would not move. The temperature gauge, you, the car could be sitting in my garage for like a month. Turn the key, start the car, drive it down, drive it 10 feet to the end of my driveway and the temperature gauge would shoot straight up to hot even though the engine wasn't warmed up yet. And I tried replacing the sending unit um, near the thermostat and checked the wiring and no matter what I did, it always went to hot and the fuel gauge wouldn't work. So I uh, asked on some forums and things and um, they confirmed my suspicions. So what I did is I bought this gauge cluster which as you can see, it's a DX. It doesn't have a check engine light or um, a program fuel injection light. It also doesn't have cruise control, but it does have the two seatbelt lights like my uh, 89 LXI does. So I replaced, I, actually all these gauges are out of my car. I replaced the tack, the speedometer, because if you notice the needles are not white, they're like off color and the tents place are like yellow. This, I believe it's because the previous owner, see how nasty they look? I think the previous owner or one of the previous owners, I'm the fourth owner on my car, was a smoker. So everything is all nasty. So the uh, all three gauges out of this actual gauge cluster, um, the, the speedometer only had 53,000 miles on it, or I'm sorry, 35,000 miles on it. So all the gauges are fairly new and they work perfectly fine. So that's how I know it's not related to the trim level, but it's related to if it has the uh, auto, what Honda calls you automatic seat belts. 
Um, what did I do with the Phillips screwdriver? I'm going to be right back as I go look for my Phillips screwdriver because I want to show you guys how to take this apart because it can be a little tricky. Okay, so coming back to both of these gauge clusters, these pieces just slide, come right off, both of them. And as you can see, the actual white plastic part is built the same to accommodate because there's no lens or bulb here where the seatbelt light is here. So um, on the backs, I just wanna talk through what's on the back of both of these. This one's actually missing the uh, TAC amplifier, which goes right here. That's what this piece is. So um, if you wanna replace the TAC, it's pretty simple. There's these screws here. Um, these two just hold the mounting in and these make the electrical connections and also are used for mounting. And there, it's the same thing underneath this, but you have to unplug the amplifier and unscrew it. There's uh, two screws right there. And then this piece comes off and then it'll look just like that underneath. And the same thing with the speedometers. There's a couple screws here that hold it in place. This is actually for the wire clip here. So you don't need to worry about that little screw there. Um, but what we want to focus on is these screws and these two, these three, I'm sorry. So these three screws secure the part, they secure the, the, the uh, warning light section. And if your vehicle is automatic, the um, transmission uh, selector. It's a separate piece that sits behind this gauge. Okay, so uh, this piece, unlike the um, uh, the warning lights and transmission selector, have a separate connector here. So you just have these three screws, and it it it, it frees it up. The um, temperature gauge and the fuel gauge are held in by these three screws that also make the connection for their functioning. So if you're, you're, either one of your gauges is acting really weird, pull this out and just check to make sure these screws are tight and that they're making a good connection. If they're corroded, I would remove the screws, clean them and put them back on because that would affect its performance. So um, because I need both hands, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to now remove these three screws. Okay, so I just got done removing these three screws. The reason why we need this loose is because we need that piece to be movable in order to get the gauges out because there's a piece of plastic that hooks around and goes behind the speedometer that um, is used for lighting up the gauges at night. Um, and in order to get that in and out, uh, we need that movable and it, and it will work. If, if you're having difficulty, you can remove the speedometer and then slide the whole thing in too. But this way, you don't have to. And I just want to step through how to do it. So to help out whoever this may help. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now remove the screws on the temperature sensor side. Okay, so I've removed the three screws holding on the temperature sensor. I mean, I'm sorry, the temperature gauge. And as you can see, there's copper connections here. And the screws are right here and they're made out of, I believe, brass, which is conductive. So, um, not sure, I'm sorry, I don't know if that's brass, but it looks like brass. So it's conductive. So it's, it's part of what uh, closes the circuit. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is remove the three screws holding on the um, fuel gauge. Okay. So as you can see, it's a similar type of situation where there's, um, where the screws close a connection and, oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. The screws for the fuel gauge are significantly longer than the screws for the temperature gauge. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're doing this. So now with the whole thing not attached, see it comes right apart. 
So there's the gauges and this one, the, the, the back of it is just sitting there. And then here's the uh, warning light section. And if this was an automatic, it would have all the lights for the different gears and it just comes right out because I unscrewed it. But you want this movable in order to put this back in place. And it's because, oops, there goes the, the, the connector. It's because of this plastic thing that hooks around. It actually slides underneath the uh, speedometer. Um, you may be asking, well, what, can I just uh, replace the, um, the bad gauge instead of replacing the whole thing? If you look at, there's a screw there and both of these screw to this plastic from this outside edge. So you would have to peel away this. And I don't think there's a way to do it without destroying it. So my recommendation is to replace this whole piece if it's bad. Um, but uh, yeah, just because both of them, see there's the end of the screws there and it screws in from the front. So you would have to actually remove this. And again, like I, like I just said, I think it, you would probably wind up ruining, ruining it if um, you try to remove it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull this out Set it in place on here and put the whole thing back in together like this because that's the only way to get it to slide right in. And mind you, I'm trying to do this one-handed. <laughs> because there's pull this out and just show you what we're doing here. There's this little tab on the bottom. It has to line up with that opening right there. And the top just sits in there freely like that. But you need it to be able to move in order to get the gauge to actually go back on. So let me first get this back on here. Mind you, this thing's broken, so I really don't care. See, it will not go in like this. You have to put this in. Sorry, my dog is getting excited for some reason. So, got it back together like this. And now, I'm gonna have to just set this down for a second and do this with both hands. Cause that one piece, keep, the cover keeps falling off. But it, you just gotta finagle a little bit and it will slide right in there. Okay, so what I had to do to get it to slide right in there was actually press this bottom piece because it was over and it and force it in there and it, 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 there, it had enough flexibility to slide in there. And then the, um, the top part was hitting the back, so I just had to push that in a little bit too. And then it popped right in there. So now all I gotta do is put the screws back in and um, pop the whole thing back together. And uh, that's the, um, that's all I have for a tutorial for the gauge cluster. I primarily wanted to explain that this is a different voltage between whether you have a, the seatbelt warning light or not, so. Um, that's all I have. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to um, message me on YouTube and uh, there'll be more videos coming along with other um, interesting information you might need to know. Um, if you like this video, please, uh, if you appreciate this video, please like it. And uh, if you'd like to be um, made aware of future videos, please um, subscribe as well. Thank you very much for watching.